Hey everybody, we're going to add some fun, some color to our game salad games today. And I'm actually going to have to show you a little bit of work in Photoshop. So we have some basic controls, we have gravity working, we have some things that we need for a game. And at this point you could make a game pretty easily. And we probably want something other than just squares on the screen. So let me go ahead and show you how to drop some art into your game salad game. So what we want to do first is we're going to need to go out online and we want to look for something called a sprite sheet. Now it's a good idea to look for a sprite sheet. You could try looking for animated GIFs and things like that. Uh, those could be used. I would recommend looking for a sprite sheet because with a sprite sheet like this one here, uh, you can see that all the animations have been laid out for you. Uh, most everything you need to have this character interact with a game is here. Uh, here's a running animation. Looks like maybe kind of a, a charge right here. Uh, this looks like maybe now we're running with the gun out so we can shoot while we're running. This looks like maybe a leap in the air and we're going to shoot. Uh, this looks like a leap sequence right here and we land at this last one right here. Uh, looks like right here we have some damage being taken. So you can kind of see where everything's coming in and how we want to set up the motion for this character. So I like this one. If you want to go out and take a look, there's lots of them out there. I would recommend just putting in game sprites and then just looking through uh, the images that show up with that. Really, one of the big things you want to look for is uh, try and find one that has a uh, transparent background. You can always work with these kind of things, but you're going to end up having to take out the background at some point in time. And if you find one that already has a transparent background, that just makes your life a lot easier. And things like this uh, with like a Shutterstock background, you're going to end up having to actually go in and do a lot of Photoshop work to try and get rid of that. So uh, transparent background, whenever you find one, actually has this checkerboard look to it. So that tells you right away that when you cut this character out, the background will already be gone. You don't have to worry about removing that on your own. So, like I say, just a little time saver. Try and find one that has a transparent background. Like I uh, showed you earlier, this is the one I decided to pick. It looks like Mega Man and uh, X1 Armor GIF. So GIF and PNG, those are file types that are going to allow you to have a transparent background with this kind of stuff. So, I went in and make sure you get the image, not just the thumbnail that you have here. I'll blow this up a little bit. And you want to right click on it. So you see this should say open image and new tab, save image as. Yeah, we want to save the image. Save it somewhere where you can find it real easily. So save it to your desktop. That'd probably be the easiest thing. Okay, then what you want to do, uh, we'll be using Photoshop today. If you happen to be doing this on your home computer and you don't have Photoshop, then what you could do is uh, possibly use another program called GIMP, which is free. And most everything we're doing today you can do in GIMP. It just has some different controls in it. But we have the luxury of having Photoshop, so that's going to make things a little easier. So you want to find the image that you just downloaded. You right click on it, and you should see Open With, and that'll give you the option to open it with Adobe Photoshop. Go ahead and open that up. It'll load into Photoshop, and I use Command Plus to zoom in a little bit. So we can see this a little better. And I just want to cut out the running animation. I'm not even going to mess with the one where he's got his little blaster out. I want just to get the running animation. So what we'll need to do is go over here to the toolbar to the side. And there's a slice icon. Now it may not show that right away. It might actually show crop. But if you click and hold on any of these things that have a little arrow down the bottom right corner, it'll give you more options to choose from. So what we want to use is the slice tool. Okay, and a slice tool looks like a little X-Acto knife. And so we'll need a couple things. You can, there's usually an idle animation with these. And if you want to get the idle animation, you can. Uh, I'm going to get just a regular him standing kind of animation. And it looks like, uh, let's see, this is him kind of doing a little pose at the end. I probably just want to grab something maybe right about here one of these guys and here's something that you need to keep in mind as you slice these things so you just click and you drag a box across and it'll make this brown bordered box around here now I'm gonna use this as my idle animation for right now it's not several images it's just one but this will work for the time being and then I need to get some running animation so 
looks like right here it starts with the run so he starts running right about here he's leading off but it looks like the actual run is right in this space right here so what I want to do is cut out him running and here comes the issue that you're gonna see sometimes as you do this your sprite sheets are gonna be clustered together pretty close so the square that you cut out for your sprite is actually gonna it may not be the same every time so we're gonna go ahead and just go and slice this out try and keep the bottom as close to the bottom of the feet as possible and after you select select where your slice is going to be. You can always kind of massage things into place where you need them. Now here's going to be the issue. When I have him like this, where he's got everything kind of compact and the feet are together, then this one's not so bad. You know, this one's pretty good. We're about the same size square, but when he starts stepping out like this and he's got a big stride, well, we're keeping everything pretty close to where his feet should be, but you can see that the square has gotten a lot larger. So what we might need to do is go back in a little bit later and probably fix that up so all the squares are the right size. For this right now, if you just kind of want to see how everything works, we probably just want to cut this out and try and keep the bottom line of each of these selections right below the feet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these out. A lot of walking or running animations are six to eight frames, six to eight cells. And we may not actually need all these that I'm cutting out, but I want to go ahead and get them. All right, now that we've got everything selected, we've cut them out. I'm going to go to uh, File. We're going to go to Export. Now you might say, hey, why don't we just do Save? Well, we've got to actually save individual slices. So, so we just sliced up the uh, picture here. And what we want to do is we want to slice, we want to keep this thing in just the slices. We don't want anything else. So I'm going to go for Save for Legacy right here. I'm going to hit Command Plus to kind of blow this up a little bit. And you can use your mouse to drag around a little bit here. Hold down Shift, and I want you to select just the ones that we cut out. It should put a brown border around where we cut those. Now, once you've got all those selected, we're going to go to Save. okay, And it says Images Only, and that's fine. Uh, all slices? No, we don't want all slices. We just want selected slices. If you do all slices, you're going to get the entire sprite sheet plus the slices you took plus all these extra little things that are going to show up in the folder. So let's just do with uh, selected slices. And I'm going to title this Mega Man Run. There's probably going to be one that's not a, not a run. It's going to be standing still, but this will give us a pretty good idea what's going on. Now when we hit save, it's going to create an image file on the desktop. And what that means is we're going to get a place, I'm going to minimize this, on our desktop where we see an images file. It's going to create this. It's always going to be called images. And when we go in there, we're going to find our run setup. Now this is obviously our Mega Man Idle. I'm going to change that for right now. And let's go ahead and hit enter. And now we have the running right here. Now it, it's going to look a little weird at first. Like I say, we're going to have to clean some of this up. But let me show you how to get some images into Game Salad and we can start using them. So um, depending on which project you're working in, I was most recently working in this one. And it doesn't really matter which project you're in. Loading images in is always the same. So I'm going to go to the initial scene and I have my player one set up as this little witch, which I'll probably play with sometime later. But I'm going to double click on my player. I'm going to get rid of the uh, picture that I have now. So I'm going to go over to images and I've got to drag all of these in. So I'm going to just go back to my folder and I can drag all of these down here into the images folder. All right. I don't really need this one now, so I'm going to get rid of it. And now I have all these Mega Man. Okay. So I'm going to drag this one up into my scene. So now you can see how to get just a picture of what you want. Now, so now I've got Mega Man in there. Now he's not animated yet, but I'm going to show you how to take care of that. All right, so now what we want to do is make him run, right? Game Salad is really nice because what it'll do for you is it will just set up the animation for you. Dra get all the pictures that you want to make up that animation, select them all with shift and a click, and then drag it out here, and it automatically brings up the animate 
uh, behavior, which is kind of nice. Now, here's some things to learn about the animate behavior. It'll run at certain speeds, so you can kind of match what you're supposed to be doing. And <clears throat> we probably want to loop it, so it'll just keep going. If you uh, set up any rules to make that animation kick off, you want to make sure it's looping through it while you're satisfying that condition. And then restore actor image when done. So that what, what that means is it'll run through this, and then once that animation cycle is done, no more conditions say this is true and we want this to happen, it'll go back to this little idle guy right here. Okay, so we want that to happen. Now, what we want to do is we want to make this animation happen whenever we go to the right, because right now this is the way that this um, animation is, is running. It's running to the right. So I have animate right here, and I'm going to drag it up into the right. So whenever we're going to the right, it's going to run this. Okay, that's pretty handy. And uh, I also want it to go to the left. Now here's an issue. He's only facing one direction. So right now, once he drops in, as soon as I start running, see there he's running. Only problem is when he goes back the other way, he doesn't flip. So I want to show you guys how we can make that work. Okay. All right. Let me go back, and we're going to show. I'm going to show you how to flip this. All right, so if we're going to the left, uh, we actually want to flip this animation. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into behaviors and I'm going to go to change attribute. And right here, since we're going to the left, I got to go into player. I'm going to go into graphics and I'm going to do, let's see here, flip horizontally. So what that means is we're going to flip the canvas over just the other, in the other direction. If we flip vertical, it would go up instead of uh, left and right. So we want to do flip horizontally. You can see right there, real quick and kind of spastic. And we'll go over here and uh, we do want to flip this. We actually want this thing to flip back over. So we're going to put in true. Okay. Then we're going to click on the little check mark there to say, yeah, we want to flip this sucker over. And then we need to flip it back the other way. Well, we may not have to because uh, what we really want to do is we want the uh, thing to do it on its own, but we have to flip it back, okay? So we have to grab that same change attribute up here, and I'm going to do the Alt Option, Copy kind of thing. Here we go. We bring this down here. And now I want this to say False because we don't want it to flip, okay? So, or we want to put it to back to the way it was. So we're going to hit Command S to save real quick. We're going to hit Preview. All right, so we're running and we're running and we're running and then we flip back the other way. Hey, look at that. And when we do that, it tells all the animations. We want to flip the other direction. So now we have our character on screen. You have some animation and we're starting to have some fun, right? All right, guys, there we have it for our animation and dropping that in. It pretty much acts the same way for anything that you do. And we're going to get on to some other functionality a little bit later. All right.